גם זו לטובה. This too is for the good. These three words are very, very powerful words that happen to us in our life that we don't understand, that seems out of place, seems to be not good. We have to employ these three words of Gam Zu Letova. This too is for the good. This requires a level of faith and trust. These are two attributes that we have learned in Judaism. We have faith in God Almighty, which is a great level of commitment. But then comes the next level of trust. Trusting God, that God has our best interest. That everything that happens in life eventually happens for the good. Because what happens is when you use these words, Gamzu Latova, you are actually creating an environment, a vessel, that whatever just happened to you should be considered Latova for the good. I want to share with you two stories that were brought down in the book, in the Talmud, in the tractate of the Talmud, that tells us about two great sages who employed these words, Gamzula Tova. The first was actually a rabbi. His name is Rab Nachum Ish Gamzu. His name was Gamzu. That he earned himself a nickname. Why? Because whatever happened to him, he always said, Gam Zu Latova. This too is for the good. And the Talmud goes on to tell the story that the community got together and they wanted to present the king a gift from the Jewish community. So they took together a, a collection of jewels and gold and silver and they put it in this beautiful ornate box and they figured who best to present this to the king than Rabbi Nachum Ish Gapsu. So Rabbi Nachum took this treasure this beautiful ornate box filled with gold and silver and jewels as gifts to the king. On his way up to the king's palace, he spent an evening at an inn. And to make sure that the box remained safe and secure, he buried it next to a tree. Comes the next morning, he wakes up and he goes to the tree and he sees that the this beautiful treasure chest is still there. He lifts it up and he carries it, brings it to the king's palace. And at the gates, he introduces himself that I'm representing the Jewish community and I have a special gift for you. When they opened up the box, to everyone's surprise, the box did not have any gold, silver or jewels but it was just sand. And Ram Nachum realized that when he buried this treasure, some thieves must have followed him and stole the jewels and replaced them with sand. He tells to himself, Gam Zu Latova. You could imagine what kind of faith and trust that takes here he's going to be facing capital punishment for embarrassing the king by offering him a chest of sand. It's such a saintly tzaddik that the great prophet Elijah the prophet came to him and told him, tell the king that this isn't just any ordinarily sand, but this is sand that when you throw it, it turns into spears. Very similar is in the Bible we find it that when our ancestors threw stalks of wheat, it turned into spears fighting on the kings. The same thing, this sand is a very powerful sand. And the king heard what he said and he took a handful of sand and threw it and miraculously it turned into spears. Not only was Rab Nach Nachum's life saved, but the king was so grateful for this gift 
that he gave from Nochem in return a tremendous amount of gifts and kindness to the Jewish community. So here is a story of Gam Zu Latova. That here, Rab Nochem, when he opened up that box and saw that all the jewels are gone, he could have fallen to despair, he could have fallen to depression or to melancholy and realized that his life is at stake. But he said the words, Gam Zu Latova. And his life was spared. The second story is about Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva was one of the most notable authors of the Talmud. He was just 40 years old when he began studying Judaism. Up until 40 years old, he was an ignoramus. He had no idea what the letters of Aleph looked like in the Hebrew alphabet. He didn't know Hebrew, didn't know how to pray, didn't know how to study and learn. But he made a commitment at age 40 that it's never too late that he began studying and he became one of the greatest sages of all times, the author of the great Talmud. So the story is written about him that he was traveling. He traveled with a rooster, with a donkey and with a candle. And as he was traveling to a certain city, he decided to spend the night in the nearby forest. And as he was studying, all of a sudden the candle blew out. And he figured to himself, Gam Zulatova. I can't read anymore, but I'm sure this is for the good. A little while later, his rooster died, which is not going to be able to wake him up at the crack of dawn. Gam Zulatova, he said. This too is for the good. And as the evening went on, his donkey died. <laughs> and his response was, Gam Zu Letova. This too is for the good. Here he is without a donkey, without his candle, or without his rooster. Morning, he makes his way to their village. And he comes to the village only to discover that a group of bandits have came through the forest at night and ransacked the homes. A terrible pogrom ensued. And he realized to himself that if the candle would have still been lit, these bandits would have noticed him and he could have been hurt. If they would have heard the rooster, it could have aroused their attention or heard the donkey thrashing around would have attracted their attention. So by these three things occurring at the time they occurred was bad. It's a loss. Why should poor Rabbi Akiva lose the sight of the nighttime? He can't study, he can't read. Or the donkey or the rooster. But to him, it was gam. Zulatova. I was listening to a podcast of a survivor from the World Trade Center, Sean Bourne. And he tells a story about to leave his house when his wife calls out to him, says, Ari, did you fill out the scholastic form for our son's book order? And he says, oh, I forgot. She says, come in and do it now. You're not leaving until you do it. He spent 20 minutes doing the order form for his son, the book order form. And that 20 minutes costed him 40 minutes being delayed when he misses his regular train to the city, thinking to himself, oh, I'm going to be late. He makes it to the World Trade Center. He makes it up to the 78th floor. As he gets to the 78th floor, he's about to take change elevators to take him up to the 100th floor where he was working for Kanta Fitzgerald when the explosion occurred. He thought there was a bomb there. He turns around and he's able to see one of his co-workers, Virginia, who was not necessarily friendly to him. She was an auditor who almost costed him his job a few months before. But he saw how injured she was. See, he decided at the moment that he's going to look after her Although she was burned, third degree burns on her body, he was able to carry her down the stairs, 78 flights of stairs. When he got to the 38th floor, the stairwell was all backed up with people. But when he said, please make room, I have a burn victim here, they parted the ways. And he was going to head down to the garage. When at the first floor, the door opened up and says, don't go to the garage. There's no exit from the garage. Come out through the first door. 
and he went out through the first door through the lobby he got her to an ambulance and he's going to leave her in the ambulance and he's going to run back into the real train center to see who else he can help but virginia said no i insist this ambulance is not leaving without you you must stay with me till i get to the hospital and he stayed with her and both her virginia and Ari made it to the hospital safe. That was the last ambulance to make it out of Manhattan that day, to make it to the hospital. Let's back up at the series of events that occurred. If he wouldn't have been delayed by the 20 minutes, and the reason why he was delayed 20 minutes is because he listened to his wife and he did his son's school order. That 20 minutes saved his life. He was 40 minutes late. So he was able to get to the elevator later. So he wasn't at his desk at the time. Helping Virginia down the stairwell gained him time. Who saved whose life? All these events getting into the ambulance and making it out safe. All these three events as they occurred. If you employ the words, Gam Zu Latova. It was terribly sad for the three thousand, for the three thousand, those who died that day on 9/11. The first responders. We mourn for them forever. But those that survived, each one of them have a story how they survived. Ari's story was nothing short of heroic. He was doing what he was taught to do best to help a fellow human being out. And ended up saving his own life. The chain of events of that day for Ari was remarkable, but each one of those steps was truly Gamzula Tova. And this is a lesson that I say to you, and I try to say it to myself also. I've had a, a lot of negative events happen in my life, and at each event, I need to dig down and employ and say the words Gam. Zu Latova. This too is for the good. And eventually that will be revealed to be good. So for you too and for myself, the next time anything happens to you that you may think that it's negative, that may be painful, maybe a setback, maybe something bad, try to employ the words Gam Zu Latova. This too is for the good. And God Almighty will create and reveal to you how truly it is good. Because God in heaven loves us all. God in heaven wants the best for all of us. And God in heaven will do the best for all of us. We are in a relationship. We love God. God loves us. We rely on each other. We trust in each other. And we have faith in each other. With that type of a relationship, you are guaranteed that everything in life would truly be Gam Zu Torah. God bless you. God loves you.